Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and today we are in Edinburgh, Scotland to talk about probably the most shocking thing for people when they come to Scotland and that's the food. And it's not that, oh my God, what the heck is haggis? It's that Scotland actually has some really good food and that's why today we're gonna talk about is what you should eat when you come to Scotland and some of the basics of Scottish food, okay? Now we're gonna start off with a holy trinity for tourists and for locals. It's haggis, neeps, and tatties. Haggis is the infamous or just famous, depending on how you look at it, Scottish delicacy, I guess? Basically, you take the innards, chop them up, the organ meat, chopping up, all kinds of stuff, throw in some spices, put inside of intestine, and cook it up. Yeah, sounds good, doesn't it? The thing is, it actually is good. When you go get it at restaurants, sometimes it could be too dry or something like that. We actually got it from a butcher that had made it, and we made it and cooked it at home. Dude, it was awesome. My son, my, my six-year-old son ate two platefuls. He wanted more, but he was so full he couldn't eat anymore. So don't knock it. The thing is, most people actually like Scottish food until they learn what's in it. You know, for example, black pudding, which is like you have it at breakfast and it looks like a, a flat sausage patty. It's made with blood and meat and stuff like that. And it comes and you're like, oh, it tastes good. And then you go, oh, it's made with blood? Oh, I don't know. And then our white pudding? I have white pudding. Oh no, white pudding is made with fat instead. And people are like, oh my goodness. And it kind of scares them out of it. And the thing is, don't be scared of the food here. Just try it. But anyway, let's get back to that haggis, neeps, and tatties. You're like, what the heck is neeps and tatties? Neeps are turnips. Tatties are potatoes. And those things kind of go with a lot of food here in Scotland, okay? So you will have a lot of turnips, neeps, and potatoes, tatties. And it'll come up in different ways. For example, if you're gonna have breakfast here, a full Scottish breakfast, you know, eggs and bacon and, and, and mushrooms and beans and stuff like that, you'll see the black pudding will be on there, but also the tatties have to show up too. And so you have a tatty scone or a potato scone. And when you see it, when you think of scones, you think they're like these little cake-like things. A potato scone looks kind of like a triangle uh, pancake, basically, but it's made out of potato, okay? So there is that. It's not bad, actually, so you have those things. Probably the most, for me and the kids, what's been our favorite breakfast here is actually the porridge, or oatmeal, like we call it in the U.S. Scottish porridge, or Scottish oatmeal, is really good. Like, the boys, when I put them to bed at night, they're like, Dad, can we have porridge for breakfast? I'm like, what kids, like, begging for porridge for breakfast? But here, the porridge really is that good, okay? And, and don't be surprised if it's really thick. You're like, wait, did they overcook it? No, no, it's totally normal that way, but it is good. Now, some other things I wanna talk about is, if you're gonna be looking at lunchtime and dinner times and stuff like that, some of the bigger meals, um, the probably the best thing though here in Scotland is their salmon. And you can get smoked salmon as an appetizer or a starter, or you can have salmon fillets for, for a full meal. And the salmon here is amazing. There's a reason why you pay so much for Scottish salmon abroad. So why not have it here even fresher than at home at a better price at home too. So that's what's really cool. So you definitely wanna have salmon when you're here. There's also a lot of other good fish. And yes, you can get the old fish and chips, the British standby. And we've had some kind with haddock and cod and it's been really, really good. Obviously the chips or the fries here are always good for something like that. And I guess that'll kind of lead us into the pub grub. Look, one of the things you wanna do when you come to Scotland is you wanna to go to the pub. You have a pint, an ale at the pub and the beer here, is pretty good. I, I mean, there's tenants, which is like the, the local kind of like Budweiser, everyone has a beer. You can have that, but I recommend is if there's a local beer that's there, like just in Edinburgh, just in Aberdeen or something like that, get the local brew, you'll be a lot happier because it's a lot more, I guess, full bodied, good beer here. Also the whiskeys, you'll have that at the bar and stuff like that, because this is whiskey land and you should have a flight to try the different whiskeys from around the country, because there's so many distilleries. But when you go to the pub and you're gonna go for pub grub, yeah, Yes, there is the, the burgers and fries and the fish and chips. But the thing is, what I recommend you get at those places are sometimes, you know, they got the bangers and mash, the sausage and mashed potatoes. See the tatties come up again. When you do have that, you might see that some of the sausages are made with you know wild meat like venison or something like that. Again, don't be scared. It's really good. Try those game meats. They are quite nice, all right? And another thing that would kind of go into there, and this is one that you might have at a pub, but you probably you can get it at a store or something like that, or just a, a takeaway place, are Scottish pies. Now, Scottish pies, it's not like apple pie, it's sweet. It's got mint 
minced meat inside or ground meat inside. You have that all in case like a pot pie. I really liked them. We actually had those for snacks a lot of times. That was quite good. Um, if you're on the go and you want to pick up something quick, you do have a lot of, you know, like little fry up places like the fish and chips place and stuff like that. And sometimes you'll get the opportunity to have some traditional Scottish treats. And one is a fried Mars bar. Yes, a fried Mars bar, okay? Um, and basically what they do is they take a Mars bar and they coat it in batter and they throw it in the fryer for a little bit, fry it up, there you go. And you can eat it like, you know, like a normal Mars bar or you can cut it with a fork and knife because it's melted the stuff inside. Um, I liked it, the boys were okay with it. Jocelyn did not like it. I kind of felt like it tasted like um, a crepe with way too much Nutella in it, but I thought it was fine, so there is that. Another one you can check out um, is a fried pizza. Yes, a deep fried pizza. What they do is you have a, you know, a, a pizza, a piece of pizza, they fold it over, fry it, there you go. They do like a lot of fried stuff here, you know? And they do have the, you know, the, the sausage rolls and stuff like that that you see in the rest of Britain. You can get those for little snacks. Other little snacky kind of things, if you're driving around, there's a lot of sandwiches, pre-made sandwiches you can buy in supermarkets or at gas stations. Your bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich or your, your tuna fish or your coronation chicken kind of sandwiches. Kind of popular, like just grab and go things. Also, they have their rolls, like a bacon roll or a bacon buddy, which is just bacon on a roll, okay? And the bacon buddies, bacon on a roll with butter, it's simple, it's cheap, and you can get a lot of places. So that's something you might want to check out when you are here for something to eat. Now, it would be wrong of me not to talk about some of the sweets that you have when you are here. If you're going to a restaurant, the one, my personal favorite dessert here is the sticky toffee pudding. Uh, sticky toffee pudding is basically a cake with caramel on top of it. I mean, I know you're thinking of it's pudding, it's toffee. Look, pudding doesn't mean like jello pudding like in the US. It just means kind of like, something okay and the sticky toffee pudding is great because it's like this kind of sponge cake with caramel on top of it comes warm sometimes they'll put cream or ice cream on it dude it is the best dessert here so do check that out um, another thing if you're looking for kind of grab and go treats or easy gifts to bring back to people you have scottish shortbread cookies there's these little they look like like liam said they look like bricks but they have more holes <laughs> it's just a dry cookie that you'll have here. It's kind of a popular thing. They sell it everywhere. Even at the tourist places, they sell them, so there is that. There are also some Scottish candies you'll see around, and British candies you'll see around. You know, you do have the, the Cadbury's and stuff like that, but there's some some other ones. We had this like little caramel version of a kind of a Kit Kat we had, and, and a pre, almost like a pre-made s'more for another one. So there are some nice candies around here. One of the ones you might see is, it's called a Scottish tablet or just a tablet. And basically what it is, is imagine fudge, but like a little bit harder in, in kind of a tablet form and you break off a little piece and eat that. And it could be in chocolate or vanilla or different stuff, but that's kind of like a, a popular thing to have, or at least a traditional kind of candy to have when you are here. In terms of drinking when you are here, if you're looking to drink, like I said, the beer and the ales, are good here, you will enjoy those. Uh, whiskey is always very popular and there's tons of distilleries all throughout the country and you can actually take whiskey tours which will go through and take you to different distilleries to see all the stuff out there and try them and it is a really cool way to learn about the history of whiskey, the history of Scotland and these kind of things. Another Scottish drink you have to have is Iron Brew. When you see it, it's like I-R-N-B-R-U and you're like, what is that? It looks like orange soda. <laughs> It's not orange soda. As Liam would say, it's Inca-Cola and orange had a baby. If you don't know what Inca-Cola is, it's a soda from Peru. It tastes like bubblegum. So imagine bubblegum and Fanta had a baby. That's what Iron Brew tastes like and they sell it all over the country. So you can't have it. It's an acquired taste. You either love it or you maybe don't love it so much out there. Um, you can drink the water here, no problem. Might not taste so good, but you can drink it here. There's bottled water all over the place if you want to get it. Um, you can get, you know, they love their coffee and tea here, so you can have that anywhere you go. If you're looking to get like that high tea kind of things, you're probably gonna have to go to a nicer restaurant or a nicer hotel. Now, if you're looking at times to eat, usually lunchtime in Scotland is like noon to one, and dinner time is, you know, five to like eight o'clock. Um, one thing you should know, if you're coming with kids and you want to go eat in a pub, some pubs do not allow kids at all. Some pubs only allow kids like six and above. 
but pretty much all of them at eight o'clock, there's no kids in the pub. So you wanna go have the pub grub, which a lot of times has the stuff that kids really like, like the bangers and mash and the, and the burgers and the fries and share the chips and stuff like that. They don't let kids in after eight o'clock. So if you wanna eat with your kids, you gotta eat earlier, so five or six, so you can eat and get out because we have had places that said, get out now. We're like, oh, sorry. We've had places say, hey, how old is he? We're like, he's six, okay, you can stay. So that's one of the things out there. Now, when we look at service at restaurants and pubs and bars and stuff like that, the servers will be super nice and the bartenders are super nice, but it's not always the most efficient and quickest service out there. So do realize it will take you some time to get your order in and to get your food and stuff like that. And if you're traveling with young ones and other stuff or you're really hungry, you might wanna order a beer and a starter um, to right away so then it comes while you're waiting to figure out if you want to get the salmon or the haggis or the or the venison or any of the great fish that's here you will have that and another thing you should know when you do go here you do tip the wait staff they come to your table and wait on you then you tip anywhere maybe up to 10 percent somewhere around 10 percent is okay if you pay with your credit card what you'll do is you'll tell them what you want the credit card to charge so let's say it's 50 pounds you'll say oh 55 pounds and then then you're right then they do it that way or you can give the cash to them directly i've seen around here the locals don't tip as much as the tourists do but tipping is, is a little thing here um, but if you go to the bar and you order drinks to the bar you don't tip them you don't have to tip them maybe if you get around you might you know throw a pound down or something like that so so there's that there another thing you might want to know about the restaurants here is if you're in some of the smaller towns and villages and you're going to do that when you explore around scotland it's just limited space so you want to make sure you're making reservations for example we were in plockton a few years ago and it's a small town with only a couple restaurants and when we got in our, our B&B lady's like, have you made reservations for dinner yet? We're like, well, no. She's like, oh, you better call right now because if they run out of reservations, they run out of space, you're not gonna be able to eat. We're like, oh. So if you're gonna be going to small towns and small villages and staying there, do make a reservation at the restaurant. Also, some restaurants will close in the afternoon about 2, 2.30 and open up again like at five. So they might say, it's like, hey, we don't have our food right now, but we might have a chippy down the way or you can order a little, like maybe some chips or something smaller, you can get that. But sometimes in the smaller villages, the full menu isn't available all day long. So that might be something you wanna look out for. But in general, Scottish food is not that bad. We ate so well. I mean, give haggis a try. Don't be scared. It's okay. If you don't like it, hey, at least you tried it and you don't have to try it again. Anyway, these are just some things I thought you should know about Scotland and Scottish food because really you'll be shocked that you'll actually eat pretty well when you are here. And the people really are fantastic and they'll tell you where you should go, what you should do. If you saw a guy behind me in the video with a dog, I was filming, he came up to me, so you need to go here to eat this, you need to go here for that. And it was really cool and the guy was really nice. And you'll have that when you're here, which makes eating and drinking a lot more fun here in Scotland. Anyway, I hope you have a great time eating your way through Scotland. If you don't, well, you're missing out because it's a fantastic country with wonderful people and some pretty tasty food. So I'll say bye from Scotland.